as I proverbially, but also literally, throw my hat into the ring. About the departure of LEGO Systems story writer, Greg Farshti. Um, it was revealed about a day or two before this video goes up that um, he was... He posted on Facebook, I believe it was, that after 22 years of working with LEGO Systems Inc., which is the branch of LEGO in Enfield, Connecticut of North America, um, that, you know, after 22 years, he is no longer going to be working with them. I believe he phrased it that he was laid off, and his last day will be sometime in July. He is not sure of what he will do afterwards at the moment, but he, I, I mean, I can tell he has plenty of time. So I'm basically giving my thoughts about this as somebody who has grown up with many LEGO themes and even ones that he has written for. Um, first thing I want to say, I'm glad that he already has its advance notice. Um, I will talk about that sometime later. Just text me. Um, I will start off by saying, even though he is given this notice of being laid off, I'm glad he was given this much notice in advance because uh, not every company is willing to say that, you know, months ahead of time. Um, so this is March and he's going to be leaving in July. That's what, April, May, June, almost four months. That's pretty, that's pretty commendable. I had been laid off from work one time before and they didn't tell me that my last day until the week before. They pulled me aside while I was working and said, oh, by the way, um, you're gonna be here only for another week. That's not cool. I'm not saying who, and I'm not gonna say what company, but the way that they had phrased laid off makes it sound like he was being terminated. And this is something that I had seen from LEGO before, from other previous staff that they no longer need a position so the person that's in that position just kind of rides it out for you know until until it's done um so this might be the similar case in which they might not be replacing him but rather they don't longer need someone for storyboarding but it's too early to tell and they just kind of let, let it happen as it was um but yes he had phrased it as laid off in those words. So, um, Greg Farshti, for those who don't know, has been a story writer for LEGO for many different themes and for, like I said, 22 years. Most notably, he is known for writing stories in various media for Ninjago and Bionicle, which is why I'm sitting by the bookshelf. And I'm only showing two out of the four shelves, by the way, but take my word for it. I have a bunch of the books. Uh, not all of them, though. So, the fact of the matter that he has given us so much as it is, is commendable. And that's per franchise, per theme of Bionicle, Ninjago. He's, there's several other books that he's co-written or contributed to writing, as from what I've researched. So, you know minifigure history the one with the orange spaceman yeah there's actually a book behind it and it's actually a really good read i enjoy it personally a lot i'm sure other people do as well but there's more to enjoy than just the spaceman it's just a fun um addition to it he's helped with that book but yeah as far as i can tell um laid off in a similar way of being fired but not necessarily like because he did something it could just be you know we don't longer need the position or we no longer need this person for the position or whatever. I don't know the logistics of it, but I'm not here about that. But he has written for many books for many decades and that is very commendable, especially considering how much published media there is for Ninjago and Bionicle alone. Whether in book form, comic book form, graphic novel, all different kinds. That's a lot of story writing. That's a lot of planning. That is a lot of, you know, keeping some sort of story Bible, as they've phrased it, um, to make sure all the information is consistent, to make sure things actually progress. It's a lot of hard work. And I enjoy stories from LEGO very much. 
I enjoy when a LEGO theme inspires a story or has one of its own. People back in the early days of licensed themes, like back in when, when Star Wars was becoming a thing, there were people who actually did not like, in the company, traditionalists did not like the aspect of licensing a LEGO set to, you know, a movie franchise or something. And it's like, well, the point of LEGO from, you know, a long time ago, from its foundation in the 50s, is you make your own things. You get encouragement, you get inspiration by what's on the box or some instruction manual. But you have the availability, the flexibility of all the pieces to build your own stuff. So there were actually people who were opposed to Star Wars being a Lego theme back then because it's a pre-established story. You're building one particular model. You're building it for a specific purpose. You're putting the pieces together it, like in the box for a particular purpose. It's like, oh, you're always going to see the next wing um, piece as opposed to a plate or whatever. But even then, they did encourage alternative builds for those Star Wars sets. Um, maybe you're, whether or not to quell those people, I'm not sure. But the option was there. You still have parts you can build and make your own things out of what's in the set. And that carries all the way to today. That's the that's still the foundation of Lego. That is still one of the main things that we enjoy about it as a hobby, as a franchise, as a brand of anything, even though there are many other brands that also make building toys before, during, and after Lego. Um, that is what we enjoy. But I, it, it is also nice having the encouragement of stories to drive why we want something, you know? I think in general, when it comes to franchises, outside of just Lego, outside of toy themes, outside of any media, um, the reason, you know, the, the reason why something is, is good for, for what it is, you know, you, you come to it because it has something established. There is some baseline to work off of. You have a character, they have traits, they have a look, they have a plot, they have something going on, they have a world to be in other characters to be around and interact with in whatever way possible. That's what we like as just people, as stories, you know, a certain type of things that go together. So like if you break down Bionicle to its basic terms, you have robots with somewhat organic parts, but living in a tribal island atmosphere. It's like a combination of techie stuff and natural stuff. And some people find that interesting. You could take the same thing and apply it to, like, Harry Potter. You have, you know, what is often regarded as, like, fantasy or, or medieval or, you know, old age, if you may, um, concepts like wizardry and magic in an urban environment. The juxtapositions are cool to have on whatever franchises you're into, you know, and you could always take that further from there. Fan fiction has always been a thing. Outside of Lego, plenty of things have fan fiction, good and bad, well written and poorly written, um, or inspiring people to make their own things. I mean, there, how many music artists are inspired by, you know, prolific bands to make their own band, to make their own sound, you know, to do something that's, you know, like them, but different, or completely juxtaposed and be their own thing. I think that's just how people work. So the fact of the matter that Greg is no longer working at LEGO as of July does not stop any of that creativity. Should not stop any of that creativity. It's enjoyable that we have a lot of canon content for Ninjago, for Bionicle, for any of these other LEGO themes that he has developed with. I'm sure he's not the only person as well for doing these. He's definitely a, like a heavy source for things, but I'm sure that there are plenty of other consultants or plenty of other people that are on some kind of writing staff to make these things happen. There are probably other themes that he hasn't written anything for, but they still carry a story one way or another. That's fine. I mean, what's, what's important here is that the creativity of the community, the things that people want to make based on those stories is not stifled. I've seen this for a long time in which, you know, but I don't go when it was first canceled in 2010. Um, Greg was still interacting with the community and I think that should be highly respected. 
because it could have easily said, this project is done. The, the company no longer needs me to write more stories based off of this franchise. It's no longer a valuable uh, toy product for them. Yeah, no problem. Um, well, I mean, I'm not sure if that's if that's the case. Again, I don't know the logistics of it. Um, but it would be it would be fair if you know 2010 he said I'm not going to talk about this dead theme anymore or you know dead because the company deems it like they're discontinuing it. They're not making more products for it. Um, I will jump back to that in just a moment. <laughs> He doesn't have to, but he did. He was willing to still go on message boards, answer questions from people, um, even Lego's own message boards, you know, explaining details, background characters, visualizations of characters. It's one that I've noticed much more recently is that, especially for Bionicle, but not exclusively, um, he has been asked for visualization confirmation. Like, People will make a visual aspect of a character that was never seen because it could have been in a book. You know, not every book is going to have an illustration for it. Now, people still use forums. I, I use a forum for my lug. So anyways, um, the, the fact that people can still come to him asking about that stuff and he's willing to answer them, he doesn't have to, he's, even up to nowadays, is commendable, you know? He is taking out from personal time that he's already working on other projects and other things to answer something because he knows the impact that it has. He knows that there's a passionate community behind it. But it should not be taken advantage of either. Don't ask about every little detail or at any given time or incessantly, you know? I read this recently from Twitter that somebody had asked as a fan to George Lucas, who created Star Wars. They had asked, why does Anakin have a scar on his face? Like, in film adaptations and some TV adaptations, you know, around the time of the Clone Wars, basically. Um, why does he have, like, a large scar across the side of his face? And, as far as I know, the response was, I don't know, I just liked it there. <laughs> Something to that effect. It's just like, doesn't need explaining. You don't have to say so and so slashed him and he now carries a scar or, or developed like a whole backstory to it or anything like that. It's just there. It could have happened from something, yeah. You know, just grow a scar, sure. But it's not, tr it's a trivial detail to what the story's about. You're not focused on Anakin getting some beauty care products and fixing his face, you know? That. That's not that's not what Star Wars is about. <laughs> I can't believe I had to say that. Um, I think he even jokingly said shortly after that is something about like maybe he slipped in a bathtub and didn't want to tell anybody <laughs> or something like that. Like it's not supposed to be taken seriously. If somebody runs with that and says Anakin slipped in a bathtub, that's canon now because it came from the mouth of George Lucas. You're missing the point. You're missing what the response was for. The the fact that the question even exists doesn't have to be a thing you can make up something if you want to but it doesn't change the plot there's a lot of details from a lot of different franchises that don't change the plot you can interpret them in different ways if they don't already explain them but they don't need to all be explained why am i wearing a purple shirt because i ran out of every other color i don't know i just wanted to pick a shirt Actually, I do have a reason for wearing it, because it says Bionicle Forever on it, but yeah, it's relevant for the video. Da, I'm defeating the point. Anyways, <laughs> not everything needs an explanation. Why is, Emmett, why is Emmett here? He is. He just is. I sat him there. I don't need to put a clock there. I don't need something to fill the space of the shelf. I don't need Emmett to be some kind of uh, shelf thing there. You just, I'm just like, oh. Put that there, leave it for a couple months. Whatever. Um, so that so that's what I've understood when it comes to people asking for canonizations of things. Some of them are fine. Some of them encourage creativity in the community. But to solidify that, oh, this is how it's supposed to be because this author said it's supposed to be that way, doesn't have to be that. 
You don't have to do that for every last trickle of media. And every last character. Some characters exist in a story just for one purpose, and they're on their way. You don't need the full backstory of them. I remember that, again, I'm going to draw from Star Wars here, because big franchise, a lot of lore, a lot of lore and world building and material to work from. <sighs> I remembered when Star Wars The Force Awakens came out. There was a leg in a different color for C-3PO. Now keep in mind that The Force Awakens happened 30 years after the Return of the Jedi. So, yeah, it's a it's a it's a striking detail difference from what we've seen before, where he had a silvery leg, not even a gold leg, but just a silvery one. Why does he have a red one now? No, no, wait, sorry, it wasn't about a leg. It was about an arm. That was different. It was like a, it was, one of his arms was red. Why is it red? Well, did that really need to be explained? I don't think it takes too much to say he's a robot. He needs parts fixed. He already had that with the leg, you know? That's why the leg is silver and not gold like the other one, or like the rest of his body. So his arm is red because it needs to be replaced. Occam's razor. Go to the simple solution because he, sometimes that's the best, like, explanation. You don't need to go into a whole thing to explain it. And yet we do have that. There was actually a comic released that explained it. You can look this up on YouTube. People have explained this over video of the comic. In which there was like a whole backstory. Somewhere in between these two films, story-wise. That shows C-3PO on some kind of mission with other droids. Long story short, a droid sacrifices himself to save 3PO. And... 3PO loses an arm somewhere along the way because it's Star Wars. Of course they lose arms. That's another thing. What? <laughs> Why would you even ask about a character losing an arm? It happens all the time. <laughs> but I digress. Um, so basically, the, the explanation is that C-3PO has a red arm that is carried from one of his, you know, comrades. One of his, um, one of his former members from that comic. I mean, it's nice to have there. You don't have to accept it as the as the, the explanation. What I said before, everybody losing an arm, what's the big deal? Or, he's a robot, he needs parts replaced. You know, it, those are fine as they are. <laughs> it didn't have to be a, a, a tragic backstory with other characters that died off. Whether or not you want to consider them alive, that's a whole other argument. But uh, yeah, let's just say for purposes, you know, no longer functioning. <laughs> um... So they, yeah, it's like, the, I, I realize that when it comes to Lego themes, that not every story element is explained, but not everyone needs to. Not every franchise in general, outside of Lego, needs every detail explained. There could be a background character for a purpose, and that's, and that's it. You don't need every last tidbit of their life explained in some way. I mean, when I grew up with Bionicle, to put this in perspective, I read the comics, first and foremost... Because they were already available with the Lego magazines. It was a very steady way for me to follow along with the details. And also a very visual way. Because even though I was reading, I was also a fan of pictures. So, you know. <laughs> nice to have a comic where you can see and read. Whatever. <laughs> exactly. Welcome to fandom. Um, but there were things in those comic books that did not get explained in the book itself. They would usually have some little sidebar to say, see more about this adventure in this book. Greg didn't have to write another book. I mean, maybe under contract, but there are plenty of story details that could have been from one or the other that I'm happy is just a thing. But you didn't have to... Not everything I had to know about Bionicle had to be absorbed in every media. I still understood most of the mainline story through the comic books alone, Maybe one or two Scholastic books, and that's it. I mean, even now, I have a whole bunch of them on the shelf, out of frame, top and bottom. I've never read, or I've only read trickles of it. I, I've not even finished the full thing. But I'm very grateful that the information is available. I'm not asking for Greg to write more books. I never asked for Greg to write more information for for any of these franchises. 
I'm okay getting what I have because it's already a lot. So when it comes to people who, you know, I know that there's a lot of debate about like bringing back Bionicle and there are people who are not really interested in it. Maybe just because they're not interested in Bionicle in general. That's fine if you don't like it. You don't have to be into it. Just don't hurt people because they like it. That's all I ask. But I don't want to hurt anyone who, um, who doesn't like it. And I also don't really need more. I had always thought that even after 2016, you know, now five, almost six years ago, um, from that, from the theme's full cancellation and no return in sight, uh, of any variety, I mean, back then, we were getting a brand new story. But why did it flop? I mean, there were many reasons why it flopped. But for me, I wasn't enticed into it because there wasn't a lot of story. There wasn't a lot to work from. I had to make my own video to explain something, which is fine. It's actually kind of good. But you also need somewhere, you need, you need a basis. You need a groundwork to work from um, for any franchise to work, for any story-driven anything. You could have some things not explained. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good luck. Um, but I am not one of those people, because I'm a Bionicle fan, I do not want Bionicle to return. I am okay with what we have, because it's already a lot of information. I did not learn everything when I was a kid, and st I still enjoyed the theme. I'm still going back, finding things I didn't know before, or things I did and I forgot about. That's a lot of information to work from for this particular LEGO theme itself. Not a lot of LEGO themes get that treatment. And even the ones that do, at least to have something to work from, and you can still make something else out of it. I would love a fully in-depth underwater theme like Atlantis or further, but I'm not going to get that. Aquazone has trickles of information that really intrigue me, so I want to make my own stuff based off of it. I've been making a bunch of... I've been meaning to make a lot of brick theories for years. And I still need to. <laughs> so keep answering me on social media to do that, because I, I'm not trying to do it for any kind of like attention seeking i'm just like hey this is cool you could work from this information that's what brick theory kind of exists it's like where well, i want to learn more about what this thing is and try to explain something myself try to craft something on my own to make it happen <sighs> so um that's the foundation that's basically what lego is all about you have a place to grow you have something that you can embrace for what it is, but you can also make something else out of it. You don't have to build every Lego set by the instructions. You can build something else. You have the creator sets that say, oh, here's what the main set is, but you can build these things too, or billions of other ones, because the parts are there. I think I I'm going to dog on video for a moment, just to even things out. <laughs> I think video would have actually been a better theme for many reasons, but for one thing that I think it would have improved on, if there if there was any trickle of story. I think it would have actually made sense if there was some unifying way of why all these characters are in bands, why they have elaborate stages. Just a little more context. And as such, I've been writing my own thing, you know, kind of inspired by video. To make a story. Yeah, a video inspired me. I am I'm I'm sick of saying it, but I am I'm still sticking with it because it's fun. It's there is something actually good out of that. And taking a bad situation and making it better. I'm borrowing from the Beatles, aren't I? Anyways, um so Greg's departure from Lego, while it is unfortunate because he's been there for a long time, and maybe that's a position they no longer need, it is still it should still be respected for what he's contributed already. I mean, I got into D&D &D even recently because I like the storytelling aspect. And I can't write the story myself. That's what D&D is about. You have a group of people that you are all contributing to the story. Greg is not the only one writing the stories. He definitely has other sources that was, were more making this happen. So the fact of the matter that, you know, oh, we, we really have Bionicle dead because we can't even get the person who's carrying the weight for this long to canonize anything it's not dead it was never dead it has always been in the hands of the community from the phrasing was laid off so 
I think that kind of explains it a bit better. Um, the fact of the matter that Bionicle is dead, it's dead as a toy franchise. It's dead as a product line. Officially, from the brand, no more is being made. That I can accept. That's totally fine. That's being real here. But that shouldn't stop people from making their own things. And many people have made their own things for a long time. Heck, there have been official opportunities for people to make their own things become canon. Um, back in the day, there were a couple of contests in which, oh, if yours wins, you get to be in a book. You get to be in a published piece of literature that is sitting in the Library of Congress. That's pretty darn good. <laughs> I wish I had that. I tried to enter, and I didn't get it. <laughs> But to be fair, I had a very schmaltzy entry, so I, I totally respect the people who did get in. Um, that was that was fine. They were way better builders. I am still I still want to build myself, but I want to build my own stuff too. I want to build my own stories for many Lego franchise, for many Lego themes. I have been following people on Instagram who make their own adventurers theme. That's fantastic, and some of them even doing the things that I've always wanted to do as a kid, but in their own way. That I can still enjoy. Like, I had always wanted to have an adventure sub-theme that takes place in the Arctic. And they're finding all these unusual creatures or treasures in the snow, in the glaciers, like, from years and years ago, you know? That would be fun stuff. Um, well, I feel like at this point it would be kind of a, a all-said-and-done decision. I... Won't go into further detail about it, but based on what I've seen from other LEGO employees, that seems like, yep, they made, they, they made their choice. Um, and unfortunately, like I said, I think that's kind of the thing in which they may just no longer need the position. They're not replacing him. It's not like he did something bad for the job. It's very likely in many other scenarios that I've seen prior, they just don't need that position filled. That. They're just, you know, I don't know if they're cutting back because of other resources or whatever, but, like, sometimes somebody does a job until you don't need the job done. I, I should know from myself, because <laughs> um, I've had that a few times. And it's not it's not great, but I, I don't really have a lot of tea. <laughs> I don't drink tea. I know what you mean, but I don't drink tea. Um... So the, the, the point of it is, you don't always have to take authorial um, context to make something real. You can make something of your own. You can make a story in your own way, or inspired by something, or completely off the books, just anything you want it to be. That should not stop the creativity itself. I would not want to encourage that. Um... So, I, I just hope that people don't pester Greg from now until July or any time afterward about any of those works. I think if, if people do, or like if there are already people who keep in contact with him, I think it would be okay if he said, I'm not talking about this. It's like Kevin Hinkle. I hate to bring this up, but I will. Um, Kevin Hinkle no longer talks about Lego. And I think there are very justified reasons of why he doesn't. I think there's a lot for, you know, he's had a lot of impact. He's had a lot of community outreach. He was kind of his position to interact directly with fans at many different venues. But I think it also needs to be respected that he does his own thing now. That he is professionally made. He's, he's made two books that got fully funded on Kickstarter. That's, that's amazing. And I've supported both of them. Because I really enjoy his artwork. I enjoy his pursuits in general. Even without Lego context. I know it means a lot to a lot of people that, you know, how about, like over a decade that he's been a part of Lego itself. Not to mention, you know, working at a Lego store, being a manager, you know, many other fields in, in the company. But it's okay to give him that space. And it's a space that he wants away from to do his own thing to make his own stuff 
you know, he's been an illustrator first and foremost, well, animator, I guess, technically, but he's done illustrations first and foremost before his association with Lego, even though that's how we mostly know him, that's not all he is. There's a lot to people in general. Yes, there is one or two things they're prolific for, but if they want to pursue something else, they should be able to do so. I've been seeing that in the LEGO community itself, in which some people have uploaded videos about video games. That's totally fine, even if it's on their LEGO channel. They have other things. They, they have other things they want to do. That's totally good. So, yeah. If Greg pushes away from LEGO, if he does not want to talk about it in any sort of context beyond July, don't harass him. Don't go after him, please. I don't know if I'm really a voice for anyone in the in the Bionicle community, or even in the Jago community, even less so, but I still know of people. But I still want to be a voice, just to put it out there, of let some people do what they want to do. If they do something else professionally or personally. Um, their, their decision should be respected, either way. So... I guess I should write some more Brick Theories now, huh? I mean, I've been writing them, but I mean, like, finish writing them and then actually make a video based off of them. That would be kind of cool. The idea's been sitting there for a long time. At least I'm still passionate about LEGO, in which I will pursue in different ways, uh, different concepts all over the place. So um, I know it doesn't seem like I'm doing that every single upload or every single post on social media, but it hasn't feigned interest, or I would have outright said it or... I do have once or twice I get a little bit more emotional, and sometimes it's like, mm, I'm really not sure about some things. But I do have many people behind my back, and I really appreciate all of them. I do appreciate people who who support me, and hopefully we can get some things happening. Um, but, yeah, if somebody has an artistic pursuit or a career pursuit that does not line up with what they're known for, it doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing. If there is a piece of media from a fan community that is inspired by source material, but not aligned with source material, don't don't discourage it. It could be its own thing. It doesn't have to follow in the footsteps of what already exists. It's not the same writer. It's not the same illustrator. It's not going to be, you know, the same mood or or context for that thing but respect that people are still talking about it a fandom is no is not truly dead unless people stop talking about it it's i remember this being a video from vsauce many years ago about like when people truly die and i think that's even been brought up in other media as well i want to say coco i think from pixar has done very similarly that kind of thing with like a second death or a final death or something like that in which you may not exist, or whatever the franchise is, may not be producing more stuff. And no longer exists as a, as a media, as a, as a part of thing in, you know, contemporary. But people still remember it. People still make stuff based off of it. People still enjoy what it is, or, you know, inspire to make something else from it. It does not make it dead. And well, the thing that usually does make it dead is complete forgetfulness, isolation, nobody exchanging about it. Zap technically isn't dead because I just brought it up right now. I mean, I don't have to burn every piece of it to extinguish it, but that is one way you could get rid of it, I guess you could. I wouldn't burn them because it's plastic, but... I digress. I mean, like, if I if I remove them in some way, you probably wouldn't be thinking about it. It doesn't mean nobody is. Somebody else is. In fact, Lego designers have added trickles of Easter eggs from all different kinds of Lego themes. I learned about this one the other day from Ninjago City, a set that I've had for years, and I didn't even know the reference. It was like this small, almost fossil-looking thing that said Trilobite next to it on one of the banisters... On Ninjago City. I had no idea that it was a Technic Competition reference. Until somebody posted it on Instagram. And I'm like, holy crap, I just learned that. I know people say I'm a source of 
a lot of encyclopedic knowledge for when it comes to Lego, and these books are not, like, boasting any of that, I don't know everything. But I'm willing to learn new things. I think that's incredible. I, I, I really do enjoy when I see something like that. Because I'm like, holy crap, that's really cool. Like, I, I, I like the fact that I didn't know it before, because now it, it feels like new media to me when it's already existed. Case in point, all these books. I have not read every single book, so there's probably a whole bunch of information here I do not know or have not fully understood that is still open for me and open for anyone for any, you know, franchise. I accidentally pushed the chair down, but uh, I'm going to try to get out of here real soon because <laughs> this is a little bit of a tight uh, space. So thanks for listening to my soapbox for half an hour. I would have actually done this as a pre-recorded video, but unfortunately, I ran out of space to so my phone, obviously, <laughs> because it would have taken too long to record that. I think there's actually some of it that, um, switch them over to do a writer, like a TV show, instead of just doing comedy. I mean, it's possible. I don't really know. I, I think that's something beyond what we can, um, contribute towards. You know, whoever is in charge of managing employees and positions at Lego, I would hope that not everybody is let go from their position because they just find them worthless, because they find them unusable. But, you know, I think Greg can still have a lot to offer in other fields. And even if he just wants to take it personally... Or not, not take it personally like they hate him. I mean, move into a personal realm like pursuits and whatever goals he has, you know, after this. He should be in his own thing. I'm not going to force him either way. I still appreciate everything that he has done up to this point. There was plenty that I think people might have taken advantage of and shouldn't and did not have to be a thing, but I'm glad they did. So, you know, thank you, Greg, for 22 years and probably more of story writing, not just for Lego, but in general. Uh, hopefully you will continue in some other way. But if you don't, I still wish the best for your endeavors. I, I don't even know if he's going to watch this video. Um, but your work has obviously left an impact on many people, whether or not inside of the fandom or extending beyond the fandom. Um and much respect um so try not to bash everyone for doing their own thing because sometimes they just they just want to feel it out or they just want to you know not everything has to be official you know marked in blood from the author itself don't uh you know creativity is how we get this far in general <laughs> um so let's keep it going uh, that also includes building, of course, you know. I, I, I see creative things hundred times a day, probably, on social media. And all different things that I would not have thought of myself. Or in the exact same way they thought of it. I'm not jealous of that. I'm actually proud that I live in a world where those things exist. That those possibilities can be made. And um, hopefully I'll get to join them. Hopefully I'll get to uh, add more of my, of my own in whatever media, you know, Brick Theories, it's videos, Bizarre Lego, it's a book, mocks for future convention displays. I got a couple conventions coming up, so there's been a lot of ideas for a long time on the back burner, so we'll see. Sorry for the buzz buzz again. <laughs> Text messages. Anyways, have yourself a wonderful day, be excellent to each other, and thank you, Greg. Um, wait, I'm out of the reach of the button. No! Give me a second. Alright. Later, everyone.